Lasad Cemetery, Osceola and Renegade, and of course, the War Chant. These are great traditions known to all Seminole fans. If you are a card-carrying, garnet and gold-wearing knoll, don't you deserve a site that is truly dedicated to covering FSU sports? Warchant.com staff has over 50 years of experience covering the Seminoles. Warchant.com is the only FSU outlet with a full-time recruiting analyst in Tallahassee. Plus, it's the only site with a full-time videographer and a daily podcast 100% dedicated to FSU sports. Why act like Gators and settle for second best? Warchant.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source. Good morning, Tallahassee. It's time to wake up Warchant on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hajavanti and Corey Clark. What's going on, everybody? I'm Aslan. He is Corey Clark. You already know that. It's Wake Up War Chant. We're coming to you remotely. Corey, you're in Tallahassee right now, correct? I am in Tallahassee, buddy. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm in uh, I'm in Brandon, Florida. I'm on the outskirts of Tampa, Florida, uh, doing the Warchant.com spring recruiting tour alongside Michael Langston. So uh, we wrapped up South Florida on Tuesday, and then today, which is Wednesday, I know this, well, we'll be going to IMG Academy. There's uh, four big-time prospects there, and then we're going to probably make a pit stop also at uh, Tampa's Plant High School for another prospect. So it's uh, it's been busy over on this side, man. How you been? I miss your voice, Corey. I miss you too, buddy. I miss being in the studio with you, getting a stare into your eyes. This remote stuff, it's just not the same. I know it's still a great show either way, but still, it's. I feel like there's just a little more, I don't know, there's a little more verve when it's you and me in the same studio together, you and I in the same studio together. Ver, what a strong word choice, man. That's uh, it's totally accurate. That's it's tough when we're not there to, to kind of play off one another. But I feel like for some reason, since we're both remote, like the the delay, there is like there is no delay. So I can jump you and you can jump me and it'll be a little bit smoother. So um, let's start disagreeing about things. But the one thing that we can always agree on is that uh, For the Table Hospitality is a, uh, a great set of restaurants that anybody would enjoy. Their three locations are over in the College Town District, Madison Social, Township, and Central. Um, Corey, I don't want to beat the dead horse about draft picks. You wrote an awesome column on it. Uh, maybe we'll get to it later on in the program. We're just going to do one really big segment, folks. And uh, again, it's because I'm, I'm out of town right now is why we didn't have a show on Tuesday. We probably won't have a show on Thursday, but we definitely will have one on Friday. Uh, I was able to see some links on uh, the Tribal Council over on Warchant.com. Hop on over there, get your free 30-day trial. There's some polls. There's polls out there now, Corey. I know you love preseason polls. Uh, which one do you want to go with first? You want to go with USA Today or uh, Dennis Dodd's personal poll? Let's go with uh, let's go with old Double D. Let's go with little <laughs> Dennis Dodd action. See what he had to say. All right, so apparently he has gone ahead and done his post-spring top 25. And um, conspicuously absent from that um, is, well, not Florida State. They're, just, they're, they're at 24. I, I messed up on what I was going to say because it was on the other one, which had just ruined everything right now. But actually, Dennis Dodd has Florida ranked ahead of Florida State. Why? How? What would be your rationale, uh, Counselor? Uh, yeah, it would be like, uh, you know what? Watch yourself, counselor. I'll allow it, but watch yourself. Um, you, that's literally in every court courtroom movie ever. Exactly. The, the judge will say, you know, you got the cat, you got the lawyer that's a little too big for his britches and is getting a little too aggressive with the, with the guy in the chair. And he always says, you know, watch yourself, counselor. I'll allow it. Um, I have no idea. I can't imagine watching those two teams last year, watching that game last year, and thinking one team, the the team in orange and blue, would be better the next year than the team in uh, garnet and gold. Again, though, it's one person's opinion, and it's April. It doesn't make any sense right it's now. May. It's, it's May sorry. now, Corey. It is. It's a, yeah, that's right. Yesterday was May Day. Did you know that was a thing? May Day, like that's an actual. I mean, I know it's not a holiday, but people call it May Day. Is it like the Justin Timberlake? Like it's going to be going to be, be May. May? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess that's where it comes from. But yeah, May Day, May first is uh, considered May Day. I just thought it's what you said when a, your plane was about to crash into a, the ocean, which but, you and I know as as well trained fighter pilots that got into sports journalism. Right, correct, correct. When you're saying May Day, things aren't going well. Right, things are your days. You're not having a great day. Um, I, you know, man, it's it's hard to say. I mean, when you're anywhere from like ten and back, 
it's all a crapshoot. You know what I mean? Like it's all just it's all opinions number one, and it's it all comes down to you know injuries, quarterback play. You know, j- j- there's a lot of stuff that 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 fluctuates. I think the top four, six, eight teams are pretty easy to see at this time of year with who's coming back, who finished last year strong. But other than that, man, it's all kind of a crapshoot. You know, there's not much difference probably between Miami, Florida State, and Florida. I don't know where you have, where does he have Miami ranked? Number eight, not nine. I apologize, nine. Well, again, so you saw those two teams play last year. Did Miami look appreciably better than Florida State? If Did my man, look? if my man, my undrafted cornerback wasn't playing press coverage <laughs> with nine seconds left for an inexplicable reason, does Miami win that game? Uh, no, and let's not blame poor tea time, man. It's 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 no longer tea time. Let's not blame him, man. I feel bad for sure, him. Sure, the coach, not, the not coach that's not here either. The, yeah. the defensive coordinator that's not here and the head coach that's not here. We we don't have to blame any of them anymore. But <laughs> I mean, that's you know that, that they're not much better at if at all than Florida State is talent wise. Everything else, I don't know that Florida State's that much better than Florida. You know, they just Florida State had a little bit better quarterback play. Florida's quarterback play was abysmal last year, and that's why Florida State won the game. So. I'm not, I mean, it's not a it's not a huge insult that Florida's ranked ahead of them. It doesn't make a ton of sense, but you know, what's the difference between what's Florida twenty two, something like that? I yeah, mean, Florida State's twenty four. Yes. I mean, hey man, right. it's yeah. all it's all the Independence Bowl when you're that when you're ranked. <laughs> it's just shades of lousy bowl games in late yeah. December in cold, frigid uh, cities. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just. Dan Mullen, I think, will do fine. He'll he'll find himself a quarterback and 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 will find a way to win games, even in the SEC, even in the the most treacherous conference in all of amateur sports in the entire galaxy. But man, it's gonna he needs some time to at least find one guy to to kind of tutor and, and coach up because Felipe Franks, I just don't think is it. And and again, I don't think James Blackman or DeAndre Francois necessarily is going to set the world on fire. I, I do like what each brings to the table, and especially relatively speaking to. Felipe Frank. So I, I don't get why you would put a team, you know, again, I know it's just one guy, one poll uh, on May, but I mean, I, I don't know why or what metric you could possibly use that makes you think that the Florida Gators will have a better team than Florida State this season. Bizarre. Who's number one? Who's number one? Um, Nick and the guys. <laughs> well, yeah, really going out on a limb there, huh? Uh yeah, yeah man it, it's a you know, it's a preseason poll on May Day it's not the uh, it's not the biggest deal in the world uh, but there's no there's no rational reason or explanation as to why uh, as to why Florida be ahead of Florida State but again it doesn't matter and luckily for all of us they get to settle in on the field uh, around yeah, Thanksgiving thank, thank goodness right um some weird things on here Michigan State number five does he know they just lost Harlan Barnett and Mark yeah, Snyder does that, does that- yeah, does that not matter to them? They lost their defensive brain trust. That's a, then, that seems awful, awfully high. Auburn's number 10. Auburn lost both their running backs. They lost their best cornerback. Their, um, the quarterback situation is a little bit more so, obviously, with uh, Jarrett Sidham having another year under his belt. But the fact that he's got Auburn ranked at number 10 to me is, is quite bizarre. Mississippi State's at 11. That'll, that'll put a smile on your face there, Corey. You're a, you're a big-time Mississippi State closet fan. Yeah, well, I'm always, I've am i been a big believer in the Bulldogs for my whole life, and I keep waiting. I know it's been 40-plus years, but one of these years is going to be the year where they really shine and win the SEC. Have they not? I don't know that they've won the SEC in my lifetime. No, that, they haven't. They they made it to the SEC championship game, I think, in 99, I want to say, but ultimately lost. I mean, come on, man. That's crazy. The SEC is what? But, the SEC had Tennessee in the late '90s, had Georgia with Herschel Walker, had Florida, a couple of different, uh, you know, uh, you know, they had, they a couple, a a couple of different eras with Florida, with Spurrier and Urban Meyer. Florida was good, um, and then it's Alabama, Auburn when they have Cam Newton or Bo Jackson, LSU I mean, when they had Nick and um, Jimbo, and then Les Miles lucked into it with the worst team ever to win a national title. Certainly the worst resume to ever win a national title. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they were talented, but yeah, it's it's come on, man. Kentucky's never been anything. Tennessee, did you know? I I did that I did that uh, column on Pruitt how ridiculous because I was so fired up about him calling out Tennessee fans about the spring game. 
the last 10 years, they're two game, they're one game under 500. They're like 62 and 63, Tennessee. Jeez, really? Yeah. They're one game under 500 over the last decade. How, you know what I mean? How is that? And then Florida, Florida's missed, Florida's had two losing seasons in the last four years. And Georgia had to fire Mark Richt. The SEC East is a, has has been a train wreck for over a decade since Tim Tebow left. In uh, and now Georgia's back, where they look like they could be a, a viable contender for the foreseeable future. And what's the SEC West really? Alabama and what Auburn every other year, every couple years. LSU yeah. hasn't done anything in uh, you know what eight years where they've been but- relevant. You got to give Ed Orgeron some time to implement his binder of concepts, though. So True. let's not. That's a good point. They they only got. I think they only got through half of that thing last exactly. year because it was the a th- first. Half. I don't know if you remember reading about it, but it was thick, very thick. It's a very thick binder, so you can't get through all that in one season. Uh, here's the real kicker from Dennis Dodd's poll: Texas A and M, uh, Jimbo Fisher's oh, new guys. Here we go. Twin- 21, 21. So they're uh, they're a mark above Florida and a few spots above Florida State. I mean, I don't. I mean, their quarterback. They they don't. They're not even still on a quarterback. Christian Kirk, who was their best offensive weapon, he's gone. Uh, defensively, I don't know a lot about them, but they spent a whole. They're not going to be good. I bet. Coordinator. <laughs> I mean, just Texas A and M doesn't have good defensive players. Typically, they'll have one or two that gets drafted, and everybody else is terrible. I do think Jimbo will turn that around. I think he will be able to bring some good defensive players to College Station. But the offense is going to take a step back. All right, fair enough. What will be cool, though, and I, I I think this will happen because this is just how life works, I do think maybe in the next year or two, Florida State and Texas, and, Texas A&M will play in a bowl game. Oh, gosh, please You know no. the powers that be are going to try to organize that. They're going to try to arrange that. They'll both probably have – I wouldn't – would you be surprised if they had similar records next year? Uh I mean, I don't know. I think Florida State could be in the mix for 10 wins, and everybody tells me that Texas A&M is terrible, so they'll never win 10 games ever again, and Jimbo's the worst coach that's ever lived. Yeah, but so I just had done telling so. you how ridiculously mediocre the SEC is. What, has Ole Miss won an SEC championship in my lifetime? No, they tied, like, um, Eli Manning Sr., they tied, they, they tied, but they didn't go to the actual championship game, but they claim, they, 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 they did the whole Clemson thing where they, uh, they said they, like, oh, got a gosh. share of the, of the division title, you know. By the way, I don't know if people know that, but in Death Valley, in Clemson, so the 2013, what, no, it must have been 2012, 2012, Florida State and Clemson both had the same record. They are both 7-1 and one in the conference, but Florida State won the ACC because they beat Clemson head-to-head. Well, in their stadium, all, by all their banners and everything else, they have a a list of all their conference championships, and they list 2012 as a conference championship with an asterisk right next to it, like the, a legitimate literal asterisk by the 2012. And it's like but they didn't win the conference. They tied for the best conference record, but Florida State beat them head-to-head, won the conference, and went to the Orange Bowl and, and won the game. And Clemson still – I guess Clemson still wants to take credit for that championship. So they have 2012 under all their conference championship banners. And it's like, man, you're Clemson. I wonder if now they've done what they've done. Like that happened in 2012 when they hadn't done anything. They hadn't done anything really well in 20 years, 30 years. Now that they've had this run over the last four years, do you think they'll get rid? They'll just take 2012 off and say, look, yeah. We, you know, 15, 16, and 17, we earned those bad boys. Those are ours. We earned them. Not, 2000, not this 2012 nonsense. Do, do, you, do you think they've, they'll, they can't keep that going, can they? Clemson's too would, proud to have that stuff. Listen, it's like once Brady starts winning, you know, like the Golden Spikes Award, maybe the Johnny Bench Award if he plays catcher, you'll throw away the participation trophies from Little League because he'll have accomplished true greatness. So I think Clemson hopefully will grow up and mature and get rid of that and realize, okay, we, you know, we actually won. And as Corey Clark assuredly pointed out on Wake Up War Chant back on May Day of 2018, you know, we actually did things. So let's just go ahead and recognize that and not the nonsense. Yeah, let's get rid of the 2012. We lost that game. Uh, we had it. We had it in control, and then our defense couldn't get any stops. And Taj Boyd kept having three and outs, and then Chris Thompson went crazy. All that stuff. We all remember. We all remember the 2012 Florida State Clemson game. EJ Manuel thrust his name into the Heisman front runner <laughs> list. Yeah, uh, threw for 300, ran for 100. Was a great afternoon, and then never really had a great game after that. But either way, 
man, don't don't take credit for a, a a partial conference championship that you did not actually win because the other team beat you and went to the Orange Bowl. Take pride in the stuff you have done because you're right now you're the second best program in the country. You don't need all that. Uh, it's like it to me. It's like UCF claiming a national championship. It's it's uh it's kind of high school Harry stuff, man. You've earned mm. real ACC championships and a national championship in the last couple of years. Get that 2012 out of your stadium. <laughs> Get that out of your stadium. Oh, uh, there's like three different ways I want to pivot off of that, but I'm I'm gonna kind of go to this right here then, Corey. So so why then, as we wrap up our thoughts, kind of on, on Dennis Dodd's poll, then why do you think he has Florida State? I guess you you and I would maybe say, or I'll say, because you're not a big fan of making you know uh, strong bold assumptions and statements on rickety things like a preseason poll by a bald dude for cbs sports hey hey don't we don't have to disparage him because he's bald you're right you're right. i'm sorry i'm just you know projecting i'm starting to lose right. the battle as well so then why is florida state 24 i mean i'll read you his little blurb where would the seminoles have finished with the andre francois it would have been better than seven and six willie tagger takes over a powerhouse that lost six draft picks, but there will be enough talent in tally for a rebound in his first season. I mean, okay, well, number one, you six draft picks. I mean, come on. Rick Leonard <laughs> was one of them, and then two guys were drafted with like four picks left in the whole draft. Now, that being said, on Tate was a big loss. Uh, Ryan Izzo wasn't. Rick Leonard wasn't. Um, you know, so I, I, let's not act like they got uh, besieged by the draft. <laughs> you know, it, they, they have a lot of talent still back coming from that team. But, you know, it's a first year head coach. And that's a, it, the, very rarely is the guy that takes over a program that's used to lose. they not used to losing. Sorry. That's coming off a poor season, takes over a program and uh, turns it into a behemoth, a top 10 program that very first year. So I think that's where the uh, the caution, the, the uh, caution comes from. It's just the fact that it's a first-year head coach with two new systems on offense and defense. We'll see, man. I I would uh I mean I think twenty if they finish in the top twenty, I think that's a good year. I mean I know we'll be having this discussion for the next six or seven months, but if they finish yeah. somewhere around there with nine wins, I think nine wins with that with that record. I mean, sorry, with that schedule. If you have nine wins, if you go nine and three against that schedule, you're top eighteen in the country. So you know, twenty four is not outlandish and i don't think either one of us expects them to be top five do you think it's because they have a new coach or yeah yeah do you think it's because they have a new coach or because the new coach is willie taggart uh because what do you mean because taggart doesn't have a great track record of well no i just think if if you know not to oh you think the, the new head coach was like uh you know i don't know the guy at washington whose name is escaping maybe, me right now. Oh, Chris Peterson or maybe yeah, that boy if, Lane if Kiffin? It was, if it was Chris, no, not Lane Kiffin. If it was Chris Peterson, do you think the, the the he would get more benefit of the doubt? Yeah, well, I'm not trying to talk bad on Willie. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, we obviously looked, we, we're pounding down and drilling down way further into what Willie is, who he is, and what he can be. But, I mean, I, I think, you know, Dennis Dodd, these guys nationally are just kind of looking at things at the surface. I mean, do you think, you know, the people I think that irrationally don't like Willie because they think he has a career losing record. Like, do you think that sort of thought process pervades into maybe putting them down at 24? I mean, maybe. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you watched Florida State last year, you weren't all that you weren't all that impressed. Um, and they lost their best player off that team. So, uh, you know, these people don't know about uh, Tamori and Terry or DJ Matthews or anything like that. Um so, you know, I, I I can understand skepticism for sure. And again, it's I'm hoping, and I feel like it will be, this will be the last time we probably ever talk about Dennis Dodd on this show. Certainly <laughs> know, the last time we talk about him for 12 minutes. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's just, one man, it's just one man's preseason poll. <laughs> okay, off to USA Today real quick then. Uh, they're doing their, they did their way too early top 25, which is basically right after the national title game. They go ahead and just say what the top 25 is going to look like the following season. Uh, we'll just get right to it. They don't even have Florida State on it. They oh, don't, they don't even again, that's State fair. On. That's fair, right? If you watch that team last year, you, you, you know, in number one, usually those things, because I've had to do them, I've had to do preseason polls for the magazine I used to do at the Democrat. And essentially all you're doing is looking at last year's record and maybe if there's a team that finished like 
you wouldn't take anybody that, that went seven and six and go, okay, they're definitely one of my top 25 teams. You just, Florida it's one State of those things though. where you have yeah, to prove man. it. I gotcha. But, you know, around the country, USA Today isn't in Tallahassee. So around the country, you just look at all the teams that had nine or 10 wins and you put them into your top 25 for the next year. That's just how it how it's done. I think Florida, Florida State, State when the season, I think so. I think when Florida, when the season starts, um, when the preseason, when the real preseason polls come out in August or late July or whenever they come out now, I think Florida State will be anywhere from 20 to 25. They're not going to get any benefit of the doubt. And quite frankly, they don't deserve it after last year. I mean, they've literally, they've lost seven. They, what, they lost uh, nine of their last 20 games. I mean, they don't deserve the benefit of the doubt. They'll, they can prove to they can prove to everyone that they're a top 15, top 20 program. But when you go seven and six, even a place like Florida State, you don't get a huge benefit of the doubt. Whatever, man. Whatever, Corey. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. All right, so um, I'm just going to be jumping around because we're just going to do one big segment, but we'll, we'll kind of land the plane here. No, I got and, I got a question real quick for you. Yeah, so you've been ahead. on the road, so you were in you were in Miami, right? Yes. And then you're in where are you in now? It's close to Tampa. Yeah, Brandon. And then on Thursday we'll be in Orlando together. Correct. So, so Tinder works when you're <laughs> when, when you're away from home. Like you can just you can just get it going. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, how how are we? Do you do that? Do you do you do out of state, out of city Tinder? Is that something? Oh yeah, for sure. It it definitely is. I didn't really have the um the conditions weren't ripe for it down in South Florida. <laughs> okay. Uh, perhaps here closer to my home base, I might be able to swing something. So we're trying, but we're also focusing on our our day to day activities and our work. So, um, but yeah, it I is. Have- I mean, that's. It's a large. It's a large part of its sort of uh, allure or its marketing ability is the fact that, like, yeah, you know, when you're out of the pocket, you can just kind of fire this thing up and uh, see what's out anywhere. There. I guess that that's probably more appealing, right? That if if it doesn't work out, you don't have to risk running into them at the grocery store because they live exactly. in Jacksonville. Boom! Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, Stephanie went and had drinks with one of her friends, and she asked if uh, I'd be okay because her friend. Uh, she showed your picture to her friend. And her friend seemed, I guess, pseudo interested. So, <laughs> but I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. You okay yeah. with that? You comfortable with that? What's it's it's one of Stephanie's friends. Would you That's be comfortable way- going on a date with uh, my girlfriend's friend, or is that a little too close? And if things go poorly, you know, it might be That's awkward. Way- that's way too conventional core. You know, I'm not a fan of convention. I like, I like having hot takes and crazy sort of, um, right. Uh, thoughts. I, I don't know, man. I like, I, I still wanted to ruin our, our budding friendship, man, our fledgling sort of radio show here. I just don't want it to create, but I don't know, man, maybe like send me a photo and I'll see what, what she looks like and I'll, yeah, well, there you go. Uh, well, no, she's a grandmother. She's 62. Okay. But <laughs> she's, still I, gets need a mature pro- I need a, a mature presence in my life. She gets around pretty well. Wow. Um, got a nice house. She owns her house. Okay, that's a big time deal. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there, buddy. But you need okay. to get a picture first is what you're saying? I mean, I'll, I'll go. I'll, She's certainly I'll go. cute. I can vouch for her. I saw her in person. All right, I'll grab drinks with you guys. Yeah, we'll do it. And I'll make. Oh, you right want it to be a double date? Well, I don't, I don't know about fine. that now. Because what if it's all? I don't want to make it. I don't want y'all to not be getting along. That would be awkward if it's in front of uh, Stephanie and I. Or so maybe like it wouldn't will- be. Maybe that would be better if we did it that way. I would think so. Maybe folks at home can tweet at us, Corey underscore Clark or Wake Up War Chant. Uh, let us know whether it should be a double date or if I should just be sent down into a quasi sort of blind date. Because she knows what I look like, but I don't know what she looks like. So I don't know if I can call it a blind date. It's at least blind for me. Yeah, we'll um, show you a picture of her. I'm, she's on social media. Isn't everyone? She's on social media somewhere. She has to right. be. And right. if not, I'm telling you, um, a, Actually, maybe a really attractive grandma. See. What? Maybe, maybe I don't want to see what she looks like. It'll be kind of like Normandy. I just want the gate to open up, and I just want to run for my life and <laughs> oh, make it onto yeah. the beach. You know? Right. Well, I've never, I've never heard a date compared to Normandy. But I mean, it could be. It's a D day. Hopefully, you're not on like Omaha Beach. You're more on like Utah or Sword or one of the ones that didn't have so much uh, gunfire. Dude, look how learned you are. I couldn't name anything besides Omaha. Look at you, man. Well, Omaha. yeah, World War II I kind of got into when I was, uh, weirdly, when I was a kid. Not a kid kid, but when I was like 12 or 13, I really studied up on it. and So I remember some of that stuff. Yeah. All right, well, you successfully derailed the sports talk and, and created animosity towards me. You know what? You'll get Don't off. care. Don't even care. <laughs> uh, so I saw a thread that really um, kind of caught my eye because there was a whole bunch of, 
uh, activity on it. And I think it was something about, I am impressed with Willie Taggart or impressed with Taggart. It was, it started off with really large, um, posts, like five paragraphs. I didn't read it all, but the second response was just the guy who was pretty much probably myself drunk sleepwalking and was like, stop all this Willie Taggart love. He hasn't done anything yet. He's got to win football games, which I, I'm, I'm, weakening on that obviously i'm coming around i've been on the tagger train here but a whole bunch of people are just kind of like can't we just can't we just enjoy life without you people trying to to ruin it and what i want to say to that sort of point here though is there's there's like emotional responses of why people should like willie and those are things that i don't really like talking about because i'm in the minority on it just the things like you know bowden the the vibe all this sort of esoteric you know, stuff that we keep going on and on ad nauseum about. But there's literally like tangible things he's doing now that I think instead of trying to accuse people of having bias against Taggart or, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, latent bi- bias, you know, uh, you know, what I don't want to say the R word on the show. But, you know, if, if people want to kind of steer in that direction of why people might be skeptical about what there's like there's little literal things he's doing now tangibly that are trying to change a team. Ira talked about it last week after we went to Panama City with the whole fact of him doing these exit meetings where it's it's not only him, it's not only your position coach or the coordinator, it's it's the strength coach, it's an academic advisor kind of laying out all these things you need to do. Now, I don't know whether or not Jimbo did that, but that's something that regardless I think is a good idea. And then we're also hearing about these accountability teams. Ira actually talked about this. I don't know why he didn't write a column about it sooner, and I'm not trying to second-guess my boss. Ira's the man. But kind Andrew of Adel- like you just did. Well, I'm just, no, I was trying to say that, you know, I think maybe he was giving the people out nationally a shot. And it's like, Ira, don't. Let's just step on their throats. War chant taking over everybody. But Andre <laughs> Adelson wrote a, a, a sort of article about DeAndre uh, a few for a week ago or so. And she mentioned in there this, this sort of a accountability team or, or sort of arrangement that Willie has. Are you familiar with it at all, Corey? I am not. You can, uh, okay. you can, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, inform me real quick. You can educate. Yeah, me yeah, quick. no, yeah. I don't want to like come off like I, you know, I'm. I know more than you do because clearly I don't. I just want to let everybody know that I realize Corey is the the brains of the operation. I'm just the face. But in this one instance, you do know more than me, so you need right. to relish it. Yeah, uh, but I just try this. In. But no, basically, there's some sort of thing where there's there's like groups of ten within the team, and you all have there's you know there's obviously assignments you have to get to class you have to get certain grades you can't be late to meetings all these sort of uh you know metrics of accountability just you know you have to be at places you have to uh accomplish your schoolwork in a certain a certain fashion in a time manner or what have you and if you don't get these things done if, if one of you screws up if just one of you is late to class if one of you doesn't sit in the front row of the class if one of you you know is late or whatever you all have to show up early to you know to to the practice facility and willie's going to make you guys run so it's one of those things where like and it's and it's it's all the crux of the story is it's deandre francois obviously because nobody else has really had any sort of bad uh, you know, start to their career with with willie taggart being there so i mean these little things if everyone says that and I actually saw this when I, and I know I'm going all over the place, Corey, and I apologize, but I actually saw this in the locker room at Cardinal Gibbons. It was a quote from Mike Leach where it said that, you know, if you don't like something about your football team as a coach, either you're coaching it or you're allowing it to happen. It's one or the other. And I know the whole accountability thing with Jimbo is something that was, you know, covered in the in the Jimbo Chronicles, whether it was the grades of these guys or um, just you know the, the simple way that, you know, they're cars are being valeted for him, what have you. Willie's trying to instill these things into this team now. So if you want to jump on the fact that you love Willie so much, I just think it's so much more of a, a salient and better conversation with not only your common man on the internet message board, but the people that you're hanging out with that are college football fans actually talk about things that are going to probably translate to success on the field. And I don't know about bringing Bobby back and, and bringing Dion and all that sort of stuff, but they, these are things that he's doing right now that makes me believe that this thing will get turned around sooner rather than later. Yeah, man. I I mean, I do think that matters. You know, people, again, might roll their eyes at the thought of, uh, you know, making sure the kids go to class. I mean, I know they're student athletes and all that, but we all know they're most of them are there to play football. And quite frankly, that's all the fans care about is how good they are at football. They don't, they don't care if their slow footed cornerback has a 4.0 GPA. If he's a slow footed cornerback, 
They want a guy that makes plays. That's just the reality of fandom. That's the reality of college football. That said, man, it, it has to fill you with pride as a Florida State alum for you or a Florida State fan, which I grew up as, uh, to know that this guy does want more for these guys. They aren't just entitled football players, four-star, five-star football players that think that uh, Florida State owes them something. You know, they're, they're going to be held accountable. They're going to be, you know, the, the, the story about Willie Taggart meeting with the, uh, the, comp- the heads of all the, depart- the academic departments his first or second day on campus in telling them that he's going to he's going to hold his players accountable. They're going to be in the front of the class. They're going to be there every day. They're going to have coaches checking on them, not just GAs. And they're going to really be held accountable. And the people stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Number one, that tells you what wasn't happening. And that tells you how excited they are for, uh, for the new era. And it, and it tells you how important it is to Willie Taggart. Cause it is, man, he's making these people, he's making these players. He's trying to instill in them, something that will last them for 50 years. He, they're just not here. And th- I, I truly believe this. And look, I always thought J- Jimbo did care about his players in the sense that he wanted them to better their lives, hopefully get an education. If they're really good enough, foster them into the NFL, get them to the NFL where they can change their families' lives. But if they, if they didn't go to class, it certainly didn't appear, looking at the uh, APR rates for the last m- few years, it certainly didn't appear that it bothered them that much if the grades weren't good, or if they didn't go to class that much. And again, yes, they were. They had their cars valeted. That's preposterous for a 19-year-old football player to have his car valeted by some GA or some manager. So Will, I don't. That, that stuff is done under Willie Taggart, and he's trying to make these into real people, make these players into real people that you know are good in the community, even if they're not great football players, and are, are good students, and can change their lives even if they don't go to the NFL. And I think that matters to him. Do you know what I mean? And I, I don't know that it didn't matter to Jimbo, but I think for a variety of reasons, some that people I'm sure can understand, Willie Taggart relates to these players because he grew up not in a great not in a great neighborhood, certainly not a – he didn't grow up in the projects. He didn't grow up in a poor neighborhood, but he grew up in a great neighborhood. And he saw a lot of his, a lot of his classmates, a lot of his teammates that didn't, didn't end up on the right track. And he's trying to do that for the – not just in, co- in high school, but in college – and he's trying to better these kids and make it so academics is important to them. And that's and accountability is important to them. Learn that. You know, Jimbo wanted to preach accountability for all these players on the field. But then again, you know, if you got a 2.2, big deal. If you didn't show up for class, as long as you stayed eligible, and again, this is apparently, as long as you stayed eligible, man, that's all, that's all seemingly at the end Jimbo cared about. When you look at that APR, that seems to be all he cared about was just being eligible because it was pretty embarrassing. Florida state's APR score the last two years, I think it was third or fourth lowest in the power five. That's, that's, embar- right. that's embarrassing, man, because they have, a they, they do have compliance officers. They have a lot of resources that some other power five schools don't with tutors and whatnot. And they were still re- at the bottom, bottom of the APR list for power five schools. And I, I do think it matters to Willie Taggart to make these guys well-rounded guys. And that is something to be proud of. And I get the caveat that if he doesn't win games, it don't matter if he's singing Kumbaya around campfires. It doesn't. Nobody's going to care. All they care about is winning games. But darn it, you can do both. And, and it's something to be proud of. It's something that I think Florida State fans, once, they, once they're around this for two or three years, I think you will see a difference. I just do. I think that 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 stuff can translate onto a football field. It can translate onto a team and into a locker room. I I just think that's not, that's not superfluous stuff. That stuff matters. And I think part of the problem the last few years is none of that stuff outside of football seemed to matter to the coaches and there was no accountability. And I feel like this might be the longest single rant in soliloquy in the history of work, uh, wake up war chant. It's gotta be close. I no. feel like I'm, I've been looking. It seems like it's about three and a half minutes. I've been talking. It's Six. almost like I'm in a debate where you have you have you know, you have three minutes to respond, and I've gone over my time. <laughs> so that was that was way too long. I apologize, listeners. But I yeah, I do think Willie Taggart. I think it matters. I think all that stuff matters. I think having Dion and Bobby back, Bobby Bowden back, matter for the culture of the program. And so, by God, does caring about what you do in the classroom and caring how you treat your teachers and your fellow students and your classmates. And listen, I I always feel like I'm coming off as like anti-Bobby in this sort of thing. I'm just trying to 
you know, keep a level head about everything. Yeah, and ultimately, I, I, I care about the winning man. I care about the winning way too much, probably. But what you said is 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 really well put. And again, I think these are these are tangible things that he's putting into place that makes the argument against him so much more weak because it's we got to get away from the emotional thing. Like I, I understand for whatever reason, fans just didn't like the way things felt the last few years under Jimbo. I, I, I wasn't part of that, but I'm obviously in the minority. So hopefully we can start kind of putting our teeth in, into these things and, and we'll get to see how it works out sooner rather than later. Just to clarify it, because I didn't do a really good job of, of specifying what it is, but it's something that Taggart calls Dawn Patrol. The teams are divided into 10 accountability groups. Each player in the group has to attend classes, meetings, blah, blah, blah. If one player in the group misses something, the entire group has to come to the facility at 6 o'clock the next morning. The player who misses has to run while everybody watches. Um, however, if a player misses a class or academic requirement, then everybody has to run. Now, tell me that as somebody, I, I mean, I assume we've we both been on teams. I, I, I played high school baseball. I assume you played t- on sporting teams growing up. But Correct. just being a part of a team, even if you want to call it the war chant team, yeah. don't you think that is a great idea for accountability? It's because fantastic. It, it is a great idea. It is a wonderful idea. And uh, that, yeah, I'm glad you. I'm, I should have known that already but that's really encouraging in or in because yeah those kids though they think about how mad you're going to be oh god if slappy mcgee keeps missing class so you have to get up at six in the morning to run you might have to pull a full metal jacket you might have to get bars of soap in a bag and beat him in the stomach <laughs> with it <laughs> whatever or, get, or, or a code red you might have to do something if the kid keeps making you get up at 6 a.m and run Listen, Willie made me get up at 7 o'clock in the morning to go cover 15 spring practices, and I was about ready to start the revolution against (laughs) them already, you know. I was getting ready to overthrow the young guy. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, I'm really curious to see how that all is going to work out. Um, But, but again, we're we're so far from from football that it's it's almost almost depressing when you kind of think about it. A couple of random thoughts I want to throw out there before we go, Corey. Uh, we're, we're beating up on the SEC, which is always good for ratings here on Wake Up or Chant. We're an ACC program or something like that. Like, which team, like other than the Georgia, would you say in the last 20 years, Georgia never had a losing season in the last 20 years, did they? Yeah, I think they had one. They lost to UCF in a bowl game that made them six and seven, I think. Oh, okay. I think so. I think that was, uh, it might have been the maybe the year before they came within a play of beating Alabama to go play Notre Dame for the national championship. Oh, gosh, really? That, uh, that recently? Oh, you know, yeah. I think it was like six or seven years. I think it was the year after Stafford, maybe. Or two years after Stafford, something like that. Dang. I mean, yeah, so my whole point is just they've, I don't know, they've all had just their doldrums, right? You talk about Florida, two losing season in the last four. Alabama, obviously, before Nick got there. Auburn, before Malzahn got there. I mean, golly, Chiswick went, I think, three and nine in his last season out there. It's just... <laughs> I, I, it's, it, you can't, it, it's, it's almost like the Mike Martin thing where I don't know, you just can't appreciate it because it's, it's happened for so long, but I, I don't fear that the, the Willie experiment will, will fail. It's, I don't know, like, why are we, are we blessed? I mean, I hate to use that word, but just when you think about every other program that has the amount of money they've invested and the amount of passion their fans have, they've all had really humiliating seasons. And last year was not I want to say last year was humiliating. It was not obviously a, a, a proud mark for a Florida State fan, but the fact that this just we've seemed to avoid the bullet of just absolute embarrassment is pretty astonishing, man. It just really is. It, it, it's just I don't know. I mean, I I, I just I, that's the one thing I think about when we look at Florida and we just see how lousy they are and how lousy they've been. And we it's like Florida State fans can't even comprehend that it would ever get that bad. Um, and I, I guess that, that puts us in a good place when, when you think about Willie, because I, I don't think that we'll be in a situation like that. So um, we, we seem to have a good knack of hiring guys and gals. For sure, man. I think that's, uh, um, I, you know, that's something that, again, when you go back to Mike Martin, yeah, you, you might look at Miami's baseball team and they didn't make the tournament last year. They're not going to make it this year. And that that's the guy that's won national championships that's coaching that program. And meanwhile, Florida State keeps steady winning these – this number of games and again i know you'd rather have a national championship but that consistency is pretty remarkable and yeah ain't nobody done in football what florida state has done in the last four decades i don't they haven't they're they're obviously the longest non-losing a streak of non-losing seasons 
in bowl games and all that in even their bad seasons, uh, you know, they still beat Florida. You know, they, they beat Florida last Damn year. That, right. You know, they still had seven wins and it was a miserable season, but they still finished with more wins than losses. And they haven't ever had like those those Penn State years of a few years ago or Michigan State a couple of years ago, Alabama during the uh, DeBose era, all that stuff, man. They haven't had that. And a lot of that is the, uh, you know, Bobby Bowden was there for so long. And then Jimbo did a really nice job of building it back into, you know, what he had it there for a few years. And I just think there are so many, uh, you know, so many things going for this program, proximity to recruits, co-ed population, all that stuff. There's a lot oh, of yeah. stuff going on that uh, oh, yeah. makes it so appealing in the history, tradition, fan base, all that. And they're just it's it's been a remarkable, remarkable run. And Florida State fans are really lucky. Uh, by the way, it was 2010. Georgia went six and seven. They did lose the UCF in the Liberty Bowl to finish six and seven that year. Lost? Uh, didn't they lose like nine to three, ten to, 10 to six, six, something like that? I mean, six. come on, man. Look, look at that's you, what. Man. That's uh, I mean, that's craziness. You go to a dang Liberty Bowl and lose ten to six, University of Georgia. But then you know, two years later, they almost they were within uh, yep. a couple plays of playing for the national championship. So you know, things can turn. Things can turn indeed. All right. Um, so good job. Thanks, Corey, for for making it out to do this program. This felt um, longer than it should have been. I'll be honest probably, with you. Probably. It's like a yeah, real I'm sorry. I, I probably stretched it out too much. I probably did. I probably should have pre-produced it out, said we're going to touch on this, this, and then we'll just get in and out. But I missed your voice, man. I missed your voice. Big guy. And I blame so. myself for talking way too much. No, it's fine. People like you, man. All right, so we're going to, I said man a whole bunch of times, which means that we should stop the show. We probably are not going to have a program tomorrow, folks. And by probably, I mean we're not going to have a program on Thursday. But Corey and myself will be in Orlando on Thursday evening for the big booster uh, tour stop for Willie Taggart. It's at Harry Buffalo or Buffalo Harry's. Do you even know the name of it, Corey? I don't. I was hoping it was at Epcot. Oh, man. We could have done the, uh, what's it called, the Walk of Death or whatever, around the world. the beers around the world, yeah. Man, I want to do that. That'd be fantastic. Um, but yeah, so we'll be out there. The, the event starts, I think, um, six o'clock. So we'll be out there. We're actually going to record the the Friday program out there in Orlando. So come heckle us, or just buy Corey beer, and then he'll become just absolutely magic on the mic. <laughs> That's what I do. That's why they call yeah. me Magic Mike. Oh, all right. Let's not get carried away. Do you want to say something before we go, though, Corey? No, just again that that you guys are the re- you guys complete me. You're the reason for me to get up in the morning, and I just think about you guys all the time, and I love you. He's Cora Maslon. Thanks for listening. We'll catch up with you guys on Friday.